Do you feel a creeping, shrinking sensation when you stand before the serpents in the zoo and see the slithery, gliding, venomous creatures with their deadly eyes and wicked, flattened faces? Well, that's how he impresses me. I have had to do with 50 murderers in my career, but none of them gave me the same feeling of revulsion. Heaven help the man, and still more the woman, whose secret and reputation come into the power of Milverton. <laughs> Charles Augustus Milverton by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle Dramatised for radio by Bert Cools With Clive Merrison as Sherlock Holmes and Michael Williams as Dr John Watson and featuring Peter Vaughan as Charles Augustus Milverton and Pauline Jameson as the Duchess Charles Augustus Milverton Yes, you're a beautiful creature, aren't you? Hmm? Yes. Down you go. And now from one beautiful creature... <laughs> Let me see. My dearest, you will, of course, have seen the announcements, but I could not rest until I had written you this personal note. How can I ever repay you for what you have done for me and for my husband? Why are you reading this to me, sir? The Duke is the happiest man on the planet. It has given him a sense of pride and self-respect, such as I thought he would never again enjoy. I repeat, sir, I fail to see the relevance of this. His heir is a fine, well-formed, healthy child, as I knew he would be. Uh, do I need to continue? There is more um, specific content. No, I see that I do not. How did you get that letter? That is hardly the point, Your Grace. Then pray come to the point, Mr Milford. Oh, you disappoint me. How is your eminent husband? I hear that the Duke's health is failing. That is no concern of yours. Oh, but it is. I should hate to see him disturbed or shocked in any way at such a delicate time. His uh, son is in excellent health, though, is he not? All England buzzes with word of his triumphs. Great things are promised. Great things. You would not dare. Pray do not insult me, Your Grace. What do you want? Ah, how very sensible of you. Ten thousand pounds. There was I waiting at the church, waiting at the church, waiting at the church, when I found me left me in the lurch. Lord, how oh, he had sent me blindly. All at once he sent me round a note, is the very note. We could have stayed till the end, Aggie. I've got to get back. Yeah, I know. Come on, then. Harry. What? Come here. I thought you... <clears throat> Aggie! Harry, Logan, sometimes I wonder about you. What are you going to be like after we're married? After we're married, we'll have somewhere a bit more private, won't we? Well, I certainly hope so. I don't fancy doing it in the street. Aggie! Good, Harry. What am I going to do with you? Come on. I really have got to get back. Hold me hand, at least. All right. Harry. What? You wouldn't do that to me, would you? Do what? Leave me at the church. Of course not. Good. You may not be much, but you're all I've got. <laughs> Now, uh, 
Eva Brackwell. Mr. Milverton, what is the meaning of this? Ah, oh, my lady, please. There's no call for incivility. Incivility? I'm sure we can conduct ourselves in a seemly fashion. Discretion is so important. I'm sure you agree. Mr. Milverton, I did not come here to listen to cheap innuendo. Ah, but you did come. An admission in itself, don't you think? What proof have I that you actually possess these letters? Oh, my dear Lady Eva. Show me. Uh, oh, dear. Oh, dear me, no. That would hardly be sensible of me now, would it? Surely the fragment I sent you was proof enough? I take it you are trying to blackmail me. Oh, such an ugly word. But if you insist on it... Well, it won't work. There's nothing in those letters to shame me. Oh, really? <sighs> Unless you return them to me at once, I shall go straight to the police. There's a light still on. Master study. He's got another visitor. Well, this time of night? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, damn. That means the gates will be unlocked. Well, what's the matter with that? I was looking forward to you giving me a leg up over the wall. <gasps> I know. Aggie. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've got to go. If I'm caught out the house this late, I'll get the push. Might be a good thing. What you've told me about his nibs in there. Oh, shh. You think jobs grow on trees? He sounds like a nasty bit of work to me. What's he do, anyway? He doesn't do anything. He's rich, isn't he? So who are these visitors, then? Harry Logan, you ask too many questions. You're afraid of him. Aggie, you're afraid of him. <laughs> do you think I wouldn't? Oh, my dear young lady, of course you won't. The police. What would be the profit? I suppose I might spend an uncomfortable week or two in prison. But what's that compared with your absolute ruin? Then I shall simply tell my fiancé everything. Oh, I admire your courage. What do you mean? Oh, surely you don't imagine that I embark on these uh, transactions without first carrying out my research? I know of the Earl's pride. To say nothing of his temper... His reaction to your little, um, confession should be most interesting. You will pay me £7,000 by the 14th, or there will most certainly be no wedding on the 18th. £7,000? A small enough sum to secure your future happiness. I shall never pay. Just as you like. And I shall put an end to your filthy occupation. Oh, I think not. Neither you nor anyone. Charles Augustus Milverton. He's the worst man in London, with a smiling face and a heart of marble. Oh, Mr. Holmes, you describe him exactly. Not I, my lady, a previous victim. Another client of yours? Yes. Were you able to help her? Him. No, I was not. Oh. But surely this Milverton must be within the grasp of the law. I threatened him with the police, Dr. Watson. You're a very brave young woman, Lady Eva. Oh, I'm afraid not. It was an empty threat and he knew it. Yes, none of his victims dare hit back so he can squeeze and squeeze until he's drained them dry. How does he get people's private letters? Mm, from servants in the main. He buys them, presumably. Oh, yes. Oh. Yes, for enormous sums. I happen to know that he once paid a footman £700 for a note two lines in length. 700 It's in the ruin of a noble family was the result. 
<laughs> there are hundreds in this city who turn white at his name. Well, I do not propose to give in to him. What exactly do you want me to do? As much as I hate to say it, I'm, I'm powerless, unless you're prepared to allow a public scandal. I cannot. Well, then. I want you to meet him on my behalf. Certainly. You may be able to discover some chink in his armour. That's possible, isn't it? I must warn you, I think it's very unlikely. Nonetheless, I wish you to try. Of course. And if the worst comes to the worst... My lady? I wish you to negotiate the best possible terms with that monster. All at once he sent me round a note. Here's the very note, and this is what he wrote. Can't get away to marry you today. Agatha. Oh, sir, you startled me. Did I now? Carry on, girl, carry on. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. That's the way. Nearly finished, have you? Yes, sir. Soon be nice and warm in here. I am expecting a visitor. Tell Hopkins, would you? On your way out. Yes, sir. Of course. Um, will you be needing anything else, sir? No. Very good, sir. Oh, Agatha. Sir? That young man of yours kept you out very late last night? I didn't know you... Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. See, it doesn't happen again. There's a good girl. I should be sorry to lose you. Ah, splendid. <laughs> Hampstead Heath on a crisp December morning. <laughs> there really is nothing quite like it. <laughs> that I'm prepared to believe. Holmes, why are we here? Hmm? Oh, the fresh air, the invigorating walk. Please. I'm the purveyor of fiction, remember? <laughs> yeah, here. <sighs> Charles Augustus Milverton. Agent. So, the address. Ah. But we're not calling on him, surely. I'd have thought Baker Street for a first meeting tried to unsettle him a little. Mm, quite. Though I doubt he's easily unsettled anywhere. <sighs> well, then, we're here to observe. To examine the habitat of our snake before we pick up our forked stick. A man's house can be remarkably informative. That's not a house. It's a fortress. Informative. Mm -hmm. Complete with guard. Not perhaps informative enough. No? Oh, surely it tells us a good deal about the man. Hmm? Such a? Well, he's obviously wealthy. Oh, I knew that already. Mm, we knew that a great deal of money comes into his hands. Now we know that he husbands it carefully. Look at the grounds of this place. Immaculately kept. Mm. That means he has a sizable staff. It also means that he cares about such things. Mm, show, appearance. It's not just a miser gloating over his hoard. Excellent. But the servants know the source of their master's income, do you suppose? Oh, he'd never allow it. It could give them a, a potential hold over him. What? Blackmail the blackmail? Oh, it has been done. Mm. I could quote you seven examples from this country alone. Now continue with your uh, uh, character analysis. Uh, this car, yes. well, it's the highest quality, but look at the design, the typeface, the layout, all of it. It's ostentatious in the extreme, flamboyant almost. You can't condemn someone for a lack of taste. No, 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 that's not my point. It's not just bad taste. There's too much effort in it. Trying too hard. The gardens here are the same. The ornamental gates, everything. He's a man who values appearances because he doesn't have anything else, anything more fundamental. Not a man of breeding. Ah, but someone who thinks he's a gentleman and cares a great deal that others should think so oh, too. Watson, Watson, you scintillate this morning. <laughs> Must be the cold. Well, I'll bring you out on these excursions more often, any more. Well, if a man's that successful in his profession, however debased it may be, he's obviously no fool. If anything, I suspect it's harder to rise outside the law. So, he probably has a considerable brain. Absolutely accurate. Holmes, if you already know all this, why am I standing here, freezing to death, slowly working it all out? Because, as always, your different perspective on matters is illuminating. Uh, I'm pleased to hear it. Well, it does me no harm to be reminded of the basic facts. Well, if anything, you underestimated his intelligence. Uh, he's a genius in his way. He'd have made his mark in a more savoury trade. Oh, seems to have made quite a mark in this one. Oh, yes. 
and no one knows where his grip will fall next. He'll hold a card back for years to play it when the stakes are best worth winning. He tortures and wounds and kills as surely as if he used the gun or the knife. As I said, the worst man in London. Come along, Doctor. You've seen enough? Mm, for the present. Besides, a snake pit isn't the healthiest of places to linger. I knew you would see the sense of it, Your Grace. Mr. Milverton, I have not come to agree to your terms. Indeed. I fail to see any other reason why you should have come here. This is hardly the sort of hour for a social visit. I have come to ask you for mercy. For mercy? Why should I show you mercy? Why should you ruin innocent lives? Innocent, Your Grace. I'm not referring to myself. My husband, our son. You must know what this exposure would mean. But the remedy is in Your Grace's own hands. I don't have ten thousand pounds. Then get it. It's impossible. Mr Milverton... Oh, Your Grace, kindly do not embarrass us both by kneeling. It is most unbecoming. I beg you... <laughs> Please. If you've exhausted your arguments, then I must ask you to excuse me. I'm a busy man. However... Yes? I've no wish to be unreasonable. You have a week. He's here. Yeah. Very expensive carriage, superb horses, and a liveried footman. Uh, and there's the man himself. Very good. <sighs> Describe him. Have you never seen him? Never. Ah, uh, he's small and stout. I suppose about 50, balding. Details, Watson, details. Yeah, well, I, I, Holmes, I saw him for about five seconds. Um, spectacles, he wears spectacles. He's smoking a cigar, large, obviously expensive. And he's wearing a sort of shaggy astrakhan overcoat. Not exactly the height of taste. Uh. You know, it's ridiculous, but... What? Well, he looks for all the world, like... Like Mr. Pickwick. Watson, make no mistake. This man is the king of all blackmailers. He has the cunning of the evil one. <sighs> Mr. Milverton. Mr. Holmes. Won't you come in? This gentleman. Is it discreet? Is it right? Dr. Watson is my friend and partner. Very good. It's only in your client's interest that I protested. The matter is so very delicate. Dr. Watson has already heard of it. Then we can proceed to business. Has the Lady Eva empowered you to accept my terms? What are your terms? Well, they haven't altered. £7,000 by the 14th. And the alternative? Oh, my dear sir, it is painful to discuss it. We are, of course, familiar with the contents of these letters. I shall advise my client to tell her future husband the whole story and trust to his generosity. <laughs> you evidently do not know the Earl. What harm is there in the letters? Oh, your familiarity with them doesn't seem particularly deep. No matter. They're sprightly. Very sprightly. Uh, the lady was a charming correspondent and her friend evidently very close to her. I can assure you that the Earl of Dover Court would fail to appreciate them. We disagree. Oh, well, then, we'll let it rest at that. It's purely a matter of business. Good day to you. Wait. Mr. Holmes? You go too fast. We would certainly make every effort to avoid a scandal in so delicate a matter. Ah, I was sure that you would see it in that light. At the same time, Lady Eva is not a wealthy woman. Mr. Holmes. The sum you mention is utterly beyond her power. Two thousand pounds would be a drain on her resources. Two thousand? That is the highest price that you will get. Oh, but the occasion of a lady's marriage is surely a suitable time for friends and relatives to make some little effort on her behalf. They may be hesitating as to a suitable wedding present. Well, 
That little bundle of letters would give more joy than all the candelabra and butter dishes in London. Impossible. How unfortunate. I can't help thinking that ladies are ill-advised not to make an effort. Look at this. This belongs to... Well, perhaps it's hardly fair to tell you the name until this time next week. By then it will be in the hands of the lady's husband. And all because she will not find a beggarly sum which she could get in an hour by turning her diamonds into paste. It is such a pity. And you argue about terms when your client's future and honour are at stake. You surprise me, Mr Holmes. You really do. I thought you were a man of some intelligence. Surely it's better for you to take the sum we offer than to ruin this lady's reputation. That can't profit you in any way. Ah, but it would. I have eight or ten similar cases uh, maturing. If they knew that I had made a severe example of the Lady Eva, I should find them all much more open to reason. You see my point? <coughs> now, sir, let us see those letters. Mr Holmes! You can't leave this room without getting past me. I don't believe you have that capability. Oh, my dear sir, your reputation for insight seems to have been grossly exaggerated. A Webley's number two. Small but effective, particularly at short range. This gives me the capability, wouldn't you agree? And you, Doctor, would be advised to try no heroics. Put down the chair. That's better. Now be good enough to join your partner by the door. Excellent. Gentlemen, I was expecting you to try something original. This has been done so often. I assure you I'm perfectly prepared to use this and the law would support me. Detaining someone against his will is a most serious offence. And now I do have one or two little interviews this evening and it is a tedious drive to Hampstead. Uh, if you'll excuse me... Thank you. <laughs> Beep right in the air with the brightest of bees, a daring young man on the flying trapeze. His movements were graceful, all girls he could please. And why love he played? The moistro there. Oh, another one! <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, friend. You was first, I believe. No, no, that's all right. Tell you what, tell you what, let me get yours to make up for the rudeness. It wasn't rude. Oh, no, politeness costs nothing, my old ma used to say. Mind you, mind you, she had a tongue on her and strip paint. <laughs> Useful, that was, come to think of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, thanks. Another point it is. Landlord! Come, come in, I'm coming! You're not the only one here! No, no, very true, very true, yeah. <laughs> and what can I get for the lovely lady? Oh, well... She'll have a half, and I'm paying for it. So I says to her, the trouble there, madam, the trouble there is the seating's gone and your old bull cook. No! <laughs> <laughs> and she says to me, oh, well, hurry up and fix it. It's highly inconvenient. Inconvenient, yeah, turning red she was and dancing about better than Dan Lino. No, no. <laughs> I don't think that's any way to talk about a lady. Oh, Harry. I'll tell you, mate, and you cheap beautiful, come here, listen. You, you, you listening, eh? <laughs> oh, I'm listening. Now no, you can get closer than that. <laughs> oh, oh! Now, nah, just a minute. <laughs> oh, belt up, Harry, for God's sake. <laughs> Go on, Billy. Right, well, the great thing about my trade is this. Above stairs, below stairs, kings and queens, or the likes of you and me, the plumber, they're all exactly the same. We are the great social levellers, we are. You can't keep no secrets from your plumber. Can't you talk about nothing else? Plumbing, 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 all bloody night. Oh, shut up, Harry. 
It's fascinating. Disgusting, I call it. Oh, it's nature. That's what it is. You can't deny it. Harry can. Cool, blimey. Not built like the rest of us, are you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Don't fancy your chances, match thing, girl. You want to get yourself someone what's properly equipped. <laughs> what? Like a plumber, you mean? Mm, nothing missing from my toolbox, I can tell you. Want to have a look? No. Mate? Right, that's enough. Yes. Yo, come on. Harry! Why, easy, mate. You'll do yourself a mischief. There you are. You, you all right? Ignore him, Billy. Whatever you say, gorgeous. Your word is my command. <sighs> so, uh, you're uh, doing all right then, are you? Doing great, girl. Doing great. My own business. Nice little bit put away. Doing great. And uh, Mrs. Escott. What about her? Really, Mrs. Hudson, it's only rain, it'll dry. What's happened? Uh, what makes you think something hurts? Because for the last five days, you haven't been back much before ten. It's only, uh, it's only half past four. Uh, do you mind if I change while we talk? No, no, not at all. Uh, thank you. This gentleman has his points, but as a constant companion, he needs a great deal to be desired. Know what I mean? Do you count? Know what I mean? Eh? Eh? <laughs> yes, I believe I do. Uh, so... Are you actually going to tell me at last what you've been up to? Uh, you wouldn't call me a marrying man, Watson. No, indeed. Yes, then you'll be interested to hear that I'm engaged. My dear fellow, congratulations. The Alberton's housemaid. Holmes! I wanted information. Oh, surely you've gone too far. It was uh, necessary. It's outrageous. Well, I've got everything I wanted. I know Milverton's house as well as I know the back of my own hand. But the girl, what about her feelings? Yes, well... I rejoice to say that I have a hated rival who will certainly cut me out the instant my back is turned. Uh, even so. But it can't be helped when you consider what's at stake. The marriage of a society beauty. Why should she deserve more consideration than a serving girl? It's not just the lady, Eva. If I'm successful, I'll be able to put an end to all Milverton's activities. <sighs> what exactly are you planning to do? What a splendid night it is. You like this weather? It suits my purpose. Your Grace, I'm so terribly sorry. Thank you, Sir William. The final stroke was very sudden. The Duke could have suffered little pain. Good. Forgive me, but would you like me to ring for your maid? Thank you. No. I should like to remain here for a moment. Alone, with my husband. Of course. Given it every consideration. Detection, capture, an honoured career ending in disgrace. I wouldn't adopt so dangerous a course if any other were possible. But the thought of you at the mercy of that odious man. Calm down for a moment and think, Watson. Look at it clearly and fairly. You'll admit that it's morally justifiable, even though it's technically criminal. <sighs> All right. It's morally justifiable. But the risk... There's no other way. Either I play this last card, or I abandon my client to her fate. Well, surely you don't think I should worry about the, the personal risk when a lady's in need of my don't, help? Uh, no, don't try to win me over with that argument. Watson, Watson, it's a duel between Milberton and me. My self-respect and my reputation are at stake. I mean to fight to the finish. Well, I don't like it. But I suppose it must be. Yes, it must. 
When did we start? You're not coming. Then you're not going. Watson. I give you my word of honour, and I never broke it in my life, that I will take a cab straight to Scotland Yard and give you away, unless you let me share this adventure with you. <laughs> you can't help me. How do you know that? You can't tell what might happen. I can't put you at risk as well as myself. Ah, my mind's made up. Other people besides you have self-respect and reputations. Oh, my dear fellow. Be it so. You know, we've shared the same room for some years. It would be amusing if we ended up by sharing the same cell. You know, I've always had an idea that I'd make a highly efficient criminal. Uh, let's hope so. Uh, this is my chance of a lifetime in that direction. Uh, look at this. What is it? First-class burglary kit. Yeah, Nickel-plated jemmy, diamond-tipped glass cutter, adaptable keys. Uh. Yes, every modern improvement which the march of civilization demands. You, uh, you brought the dark lantern. Yes. And these. Oh. Yeah. Masks. I made them out of black silk. Oh. oh, I see you have a, a strong natural turn for this sort of thing yourself. Yes, well done. You see, not a glimmer of light in the windows. <laughs> oh, yes, everything's going splendidly. Good. What about the dog? Oh, uh, Aggie, uh, that's my fiancé, would have chained it up hmm? to give me a clear run at her room. Good. God. No, save her scruples for later, Doctor. Besides, she's doomed to disappointment. Now, that's Milberton's bedroom, next door to the study, where the safe is. You're sure you'll be asleep? Yes, yeah, and impossible to wake, according to Aggie. Yes, it's a standing joke in the servants' hall. Now, that door leads straight into the study. It'll be locked and bolted. Too noisy to open. What then? Around the side. Follow me. of those edges. They raise a sharp. Thank you, Doctor, but I have done this before. Now, the key is always left in the log. Ah. Yeah. So, from this moment on, we're criminals. Actually, we've been criminals from the time we walked through the gates, entry with intent to burgle. When I put my hand through the glass, the offence changed to burglary proper. Section 25 of the Larceny Act. Maximum punishment, life imprisonment. Thank you very much for the information. You're welcome. Now, I suggest we leave the technical discussion until after we're finished. It's pitch black. I'll light the lantern. No, no, not until we're in the study. Now, I know the way. Give me your hand. Yeah. That's very good. Ready? Ready. Come then. To work. This is the door to his bedroom. Right. And then... Yes, the study. Locked? No. No, no, wait, wait, wait. You hear anything? Nothing. Yes, nor I. Right, very well. Good grief. Quack, 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 quack. Oh, yeah. He didn't hear it. Come on. Why is the fire still burning? Uh, I don't know. Wait, I'll... Uh... sound from the bedroom. Good. I'll, uh, I'll unlock the garden door, secure our retreat. Uh, good man, good man. And I'll just... Uh, Jimmy. Holmes? Holmes? What? 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 It was unlocked all the time. We could have walked straight in. Yes, I don't like this. So we've no time to lose. Um, can I do anything? Yeah, uh, yeah, stand by the door. If you hear anyone coming, lock it, and we can get away through the house. Right. If someone comes the other way, um... Uh, yes? What, well, we can get out to the garden if the job's done, or, um, 
Yes, hide behind those window curtains if it isn't. Do you understand? Uh, yes, perfectly. Right, well, uh, to your post then. I'll see what I can do with the safe. The boy I love is up in the gallery. The boy I love is looking down at me. There he is, can't you see? Where are you, Billy? everything back. Now the curtains, quickly. <sighs> A servant? I don't think so. No written? You get everything. Yeah. Perhaps he's not coming in here. Careful. I'll be able to see if the handle turns. Holmes. What? The door of the safe. It isn't shut properly. Damn. I'll do it. No. No. What is it? I can smell his cigar. Mm. Yes, I know, Puss. It's very late, isn't it? Yes. But it should be worth it. Ah, yes. Now, will she be on time for it? Oh, admirable. Down you go. Patience, patience. A visitor. At this time of night. I should have foreseen it. Uh, come in, come in, my dear. Oh, what a terrible night, don't you agree? Well, I must say I approve of the veil. I wish all my uh, suppliers were so cautious. Well, my dear, you've made me lose a good night's rest. You really couldn't come at any other time, eh? Hmm? No, sir. Yes, well, I dare say the Countess is a harsh mistress. Well, you have your chance to get level now. Yes. Hey, bless the girl, what are you shivering about? Pull yourself together. Now, ah, let's get down to business. Uh, you say that you have five letters which compromise the Countess d'Albert. You want to sell them, I want to buy them. So far, so good. It only remains to fix the pro... Great heavens. Well, well. Is it you? The woman whose life you have ruined. <sighs> ah, you are so very obstinate. Why did you drive me to such extremities? I assure you I wouldn't hurt a fly of my own accord, but every man has his business. What was I to do? I put the price well within your means. You wouldn't pay. So you sent the letter to my husband and he broke his heart and died. Oh, pray accept my deepest condolences. You unspeakable hypocrite. Don't imagine that you can bully me. You will ruin no more lives as you've ruined mine. You will wring no more hearts as you've wrung mine. What are you doing? Freeing the world of a poisonous thing. Oh. No! No! Oh. My God! Now, Watson, I might not be too late. No.
this is for my husband. Good God above. His face. There's no time for that. Mm. The servants will be here in moments. Help me. After burning all of the victim's private papers, ah. the murderers made their escape across Hampstead Heath. One of the two masked men was caught by the undergardener and got away only after a struggle. He was a middle-sized, strongly built man with a square jaw, a thick neck and a moustache. Yes, well, rather vague. That might be a description of you. That's not in the least funny. Uh, yes, actually, I agree. <coughs> Who's on the case? Lestrade. Oh, well... Holmes, he's no fool. No, but it's extremely unlikely that he'll look in this direction. Why shouldn't he? Well, Scotland Yard have had their eyes on Milberton for some time. Now, Lestrade will decide that the killers were being blackmailed and that their sole object was to avoid social exposure. That's hardly going to suggest us. Uh, I wish I had your certainty. Watson, our client's happiness is secure. A sizable part of the population of London can sleep easier tonight. What's wrong? <sighs> Well, it's this. In that room when I was, uh, when I was on guard and you were working on the safe. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever been as thrilled. Not once. Not in all the times we were on the right side of the law rather than the wrong. I don't know, I, uh, I rejoiced in it. Yes, yes, it's a powerful drug. Now, besides, our cause was right. It was a, a chivalrous mission. Yes, yes, of course. But what happened then was none of our affair. Well, how can you say that? We stood and watched while a murder was committed. Could you have prevented it? Perhaps. I don't think so. <laughs> Watson, what we achieved would have put Milverton out of action for a year. Well, perhaps less. Instead of which... Uh, there must have been another way. No, no. There are some crimes which the law can't touch. And do you believe in private revenge? I believe in justice. In Charles Augustus Milverton, Sherlock Holmes was played by Clive Medicine and Dr. Watson by Michael Williams. With Peter Vaughan as Charles Augustus Milverton and Pauline Jameson as the Duchess. Aggie was played by Alice Arnold, Harry Logan by David Thorpe, Lady Eva by Danielle Allen, and the Doctor by Peter Penry Jones. The pianist was Michael Haslam, and the violinist was Leonard Friedman. Charles Augustus Milverton was dramatised for radio by Bert Cools and directed by Enid Williams. <laughs>